Welcome to another episode of Trial Site News. On today's show, we're going to be discussing the French population study that is focusing in on the cardiovascular risk associated with the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. This follows a report from the WHO's subcommittee late last year, which talked about this very issue, saying that available data suggest that the immediate course of myocarditis and pericarditis following vaccination with both vaccines is generally mild and responds to treatment. Follow-up is ongoing to determine long-term outcomes. Vaccinated individuals should be instructed to seek immediate medical attention if they develop symptoms indicative of myocarditis or pericarditis, such as new onset and persisting chest pain, shortness of breath, or palpitations following vaccination. And so, here we are, months after the World Health Organization addressed this issue, we're going to deep dive into what is going on here. From Trial Site News, I am Adrian. And our episode is starting right now. Now, before we get started with our coverage today, a little company promotion here. Trial Site News has launched a crowdfunding effort where we are looking to raise $250,000 in capital under the new Reg CF rules. The money will be used to continue to advance and evolve our platform, including creating new features on our website like our new Q&A feature, and of course invest in better, deeper, scientific, and business-related biomedical research content. If you'd like to own a piece of Trial Site News, now is a great opportunity to do so. Your investment will help us continue to bring unbiased, independent, and much needed perspective to biomedical research. To learn more, you can click on the link in the description below. Now back to the topic at hand. Recently, a team of researchers from France's National Health Insurance Program launched a population-wide study to investigate the risks of myocarditis and pericarditis due to COVID-19 vaccination. They tapped into a suite of nationwide hospital discharge and vaccine databases. The group analyzed 1,612 cases of myocarditis and 1,613 cases of pericarditis identified in the European nation from May 12, 2021 to October 31st of 2021. They conducted a retrospective matched case control series studies. The team discovered that the risk for both myocarditis and pericarditis spiked the first week after vaccination. The increase in these cardiovascular-based adverse events increased even further after the second dose. When comparing both Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna's vaccines, the study results, peer-reviewed and published in the journal Nature, indicate both mRNA vaccines introduce greater risk for myocarditis with the Moderna vaccine as compared to the Pfizer-BioNTech product. This is important, as health agencies must better understand the risks associated with these COVID-19 mRNA-based vaccine products to adjust the risk-benefit analysis with appropriate health communications, identifying the benefits and risks. The French National Health Insurance Fund, known as CNAM, which covers 93% of the French population via 101 local health insurance funds, sponsored this study. The agency is governed by both the Social Security Ministry of Finance and Economy Ministry. The study team's corresponding author, Stéphane Levou, operates out of CNAM's division called the French National Agency for the Safety of Medicines and Health Products, otherwise known as ANSM, a group that focuses on society-wide study of major health products. So let's talk about the study context here. By July of 2021, the European Medicines Agency, or EMA, added myocarditis and pericarditis to the list of adverse events of both mRNA-based vaccines. With numerous reports indicating these cardiovascular-based adverse events occur in mostly clusters of young males, the overall predominance of these risks in young males remained uncertain. Thus, this French national agency launched a study investigating the specific population-based risks associated with the mRNA-based COVID-19 vaccines across sex and age groups by vaccine type. This is important, especially given the ongoing status of the COVID-19 mass vaccination program. The study team noted that during a period of study between May 12, 2021 and October 31st of 2021, with 32 million persons in France aged 12 to 50, 
with 21.2 million first and 19.3 million second doses of Pfizer-BioNTech BNT162b2 vaccines were administered, and 2.86 million first dose and 2.58 million second doses of the Moderna mRNA-1273 vaccine were also administered. Now, concurrently, the French National Insurance Agency-based study team identified 1,612 cases of myocarditis, noting 87 or 5.4% of cases of pericarditis with the myocarditis as an associated diagnosis were recorded nationwide. The study protocol called for matching those cases to 16,120 and 16,130 control subjects, respectively. The authors report that the risk of myocarditis grew in the week after vaccination with both first and second doses, and they also found the risk of pericarditis increases, and you can see the results as measured in odds ratios. The National France population results concur with other safety signals generated by various pharmacovigilance systems in France and beyond. The risks for these cardiovascular events post-COVID-19 vaccination is higher with Moderna's vaccine, although the risks are insignificant when reviewing safety rates between the two vaccines via passive surveillance reporting here in America. The authors report that both Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines are associated with greater risk for both myocarditis and pericarditis within the first week after vaccination. The risks increase with the second dose and are evident in both males and females. The group identified the risks cut across both males and females and validated previous studies that these risks for cardiovascular events increase across younger age groups. Importantly, they note that the risk of developing myocarditis increases in males, while the risk for developing pericarditis increases in females over 30 after vaccination. Mostly both cases of myocarditis and pericarditis with hospitalization didn't lead to more severe outcomes. Now, thanks to these French study authors, new material safety data has surfaced. These include the following. The risk for myocarditis extends beyond young men. The risks of pericarditis after second mRNA vaccine dose are significant and include women, which align with a cohort study in Nordic countries. Observations of combined outcome, the office called myopericarditis. Segmenting adolescents aged 12 to 17 and young men or women 18 to 25 years, the study team found that post the second dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, the risks are higher in the young adult cohort, which concurs with Israeli surveillance data, but contrasts with American data. The authors suggest a role for sex hormones in the increased susceptibility for myocarditis of young men compared to women. Yet here the authors report notable pericarditis risks for females over 30 after the second dose of Moderna. The ANSM-based study team declared that several factors support the hypothesis of a causal relationship between mRNA vaccination and the risk of myocarditis and pericarditis, including a strong statistical association even after adjusting for a history of these conditions or recent COVID-19 infection. These occurred during a period of time when most known respiratory viruses not widely circulating. Condensed time period between vaccine exposure and hospitalization, especially notable after the second dose. Associations didn't persist after second days post-exposure. The strong response after the second dose with Moderna's mRNA-1273, a larger amount of mRNA, suggests a dose relationship. Now, the study authors point to confidence behind the study results due to the following factors. They had a large sample size. They had population-based character high-quality comprehensive medical databases, 1,612 confirmed cases of myocarditis and 1,613 pericarditis. They had 46 million doses administered, and they had population-wide estimates of COVID-19 vaccination risk and burden at a national level, and methodical adjustment for other risk factors, meaning COVID-19 infection, and so on and so forth. Now, what about study limitations? Well, like all studies, this one has limitations as well. First, you have the French National Health Data System has little documentation for correlation or verification, the cases beyond diagnostic codes, which limit the ability to detect asymptomatic or mild forms of the two cardiovascular conditions. And while outcomes mostly appear favorable, the study had no way to investigate long-term consequences. The study also excluded the third booster dose of the COVID-19 vaccines. The authors could not always quantify associations across age and sex subgroups for both vaccines, and they note only with a, quote, considerable degree of uncertainty due to the limited time span of the observations. So now let's talk about the authors' conclusions. 
Well, this population-wide study provides strong evidence of greater risk of both myocarditis and pericarditis in the week directly after exposure to the COVID-19 vaccines in both males and females. The second dose of Moderna's mRNA-1273 vaccine equates with the most risk. The authors recommend more studies based on extended periods of observation to investigate the risks associated with booster doses of the vaccine, which, as we here at Trial Site News have repeatedly emphasized, health systems backed by the CDC here in the US should also be studying the long-term consequences of these cardiovascular safety incidents. In any case, we will of course be continuing to monitor this ever-developing story as it evolves. And that, my friends, will bring our episode to a close once more. As always, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. From Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and I will see you all next time.